Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we are going to learn how to provision a Red Hat EC2 instance in AWS Cloud. Let's say you are completely new to AWS Cloud. You wanted to learn how to spin up a VM, how to log in into that VM, and then how to, you know, like execute basic Linux command. This is a good video for you. All right, so let's get started. The prerequisite for this particular lab exercise is, you know, you need to have AWS account uh, set up. If you don't have AWS account set up, that's not a problem. All you have to do is just go to Google and then just type AWS free tier account. Click on this particular link that will take you to this page and then you can go ahead and then sign up for your AWS free tier account. Now, let's say that you have created your AWS account and you logged in into AWS console. So this is how it's going to look like. Now, let's say how to spin up a Red Hat Linux VM. So all you have to do is uh, click on EC2 here and then click on launch instance. If you see here, um, there are various AMIs available for us here. Okay, so we wanted to spin up a Red Hat. So let's give some name here Red Hat EC2 and then click on Red Hat. So AWS have created a bunch of AMIs for us. So AMI is nothing but a template which contains all your OS and then other supported applications in it. So we just need to uh, select the uh, the tab here and then you can see here AWS have these three different templates under Red Hat. So we wanted to spin up uh, this particular one. So we wanted to choose Linux 9 version as of August 3rd, 2023. So that's the available version. So let's select that one. And then we wanted to choose the instance type. So this is actually for how many CPUs you want and you know all this computing. Uh, so let's actually go with one CPU and then two gig, okay? So if you see here as a free tier, uh, th this is the eligibility, right? So you can have for your free tier account, one CPU with one gig. You will not be charged when you go with this uh, t2.micro, but uh, again, if you are setting up Jenkins or if you are setting up uh, Tomcat or, or you know, uh, Nexus or Artifactory, uh, you better need to have, you know, slightly more computing power. So I'm going to go with... Uh, dot small, which is one CPU and then two gig memory. And then we have to select a key pair. So this is like securely uh, connecting to your EC2 instance from your local machine, right? So we need to create a key pair. So let me create a new key pair. So let me give uh, something like maybe my Red Hat key. So uh, give a name for your key, uh, uh, key pair. So don't give any space or don't give any special characters when you create a key pair and then rest everything, you can leave it as as, of, uh, it, as it is and then click on create key pair. There you go. So now what this has done is, you know, this has downloaded, uh, you know, this dot perm key or this perm key in my local machine. Okay. And then if you want to open up any additional port numbers, uh, you know, and then you can open up. So click on edit. So by default, as you can see here, port number 22 is open. Why? Because uh, using this port number 22, you can securely connect from your local machine into this particular EC2 instance. Okay. But if you wanted to open up additional port number, you can click on add security group rule and then you can open up. Let's say you wanted to set up Jenkins on this particular machine. The Jenkins default port number is 8080. Okay. And then you can leave, uh, you know, the source as, uh, you know, zeros, all zeros. Okay. I know this is not recommended. Uh, but if you are interested in, uh, you know, mentioning your local machine IP address, feel free to mention that IP address as well. Okay. Or you can also select my IP and that's going to, you know, find out your public IP address and then you can do that. Okay. If you want, you can also do that as well. Okay. But I'm going to leave it anywhere. Okay. Perfect. And then how much root volume you wanted, right? Uh, I don't think 10 gig is enough. I'm going to maybe bump it up to maybe 15 gig. So that's it, right? So now you can see uh, in the summary section how many instances we are creating, what is the AMI uh, type, uh, what is our instance type, and then the security group, or whatever the security uh, firewall rules we have created, right? That's the name of the security group, and then what is the storage volume, right? And that's it. And click on launch instance. There you go. So our in instance is successfully launched. So click on that instance ID. Now that will uh, that will take us over here. So right now it is in the process of uh, coming up. So while this is coming up, 
if you actually see my website, I also provided a small link here, which talks about how you can connect to your EC2 instance from a local machine. So as this is coming up, why don't we just talk about it, right? So let's say this is you, you have a laptop, uh, you have created this EC2 instance in AWS cloud. So how are you going to connect to it, right? So yes, if you're using a laptop, whether if you're using a Windows laptop or MacBook, uh, you need to have SSH client. So you can use either Git bash or you can use iTerm or you can also use Putty as well. You can use any any of uh, such uh, uh, you know uh, terminals in order to connect to your EC2 instance running in AWS cloud. Uh, since I'm actually running on MacBook, I already have my iTerm installed. So I'm going to use this iTerm to connect to EC2 instance running in AWS cloud. So how would you connect? So let's go here and make sure this is in the running state and then click on this, uh, you know, this checkbox and then click on connect. Now you're gonna see these four tabs, click on SSH client and then click on this example, right? So basically we are going to connect using our SSH keys, which we just downloaded uh, in our local machine. Generally, this will be in our downloads directory and this is the name of the user and then this is the public uh, uh, DNS name for your EC2 instance, okay? So copy this one. So type PWD, so this tells you that this is the working directory right now. So if you see here, our keys got downloaded into the downloads directory. So type CD downloads and then type PWD. So now I'm actually in the downloads directory. And then if you're wondering about the key, you can see whether the keys got downloaded here. So you type LS minus AL and then mention the key name. There you go, you see here, right? So we downloaded this key like few seconds ago. Uh, and as you can see here, this has like read and write, right? So this should not have write access, okay, as per uh, AWS uh, recommendation here. So what are they saying? They're saying that run this command if necessary to ensure that the key is not publicly viewable. So just copy this command, change mod 400, execute that, and then you type ls minus l. Wow, there you go, you see here? Now this has only like read-only access, right? Perfect. So that is good. Now let's go ahead and then copy the URL from here and then paste that over here. And now it is asking, are you sure you wanna continue connecting? Then type yes. There you go. Now you see here, so we are actually connected to our uh, EC2 instance running in the AWS cloud. And then this is the username, right? Easy to username, and uh, you can see that here. So that's a default username for our uh, Red Hat EC2 instance. So yeah, so that's it guys. You know, that's how you would uh, provision an EC2 instance and then connect to your EC2 instance from your local machine. And then last but not the least, so whenever you are doing your uh, lab exercise or anything like that, after you're done with the lab exercise, it is also a good practice to stop your EC2 instance from running after you're done with the lab exercise. Why? Because you know if you keep them running, you will be really charged. So if you want to avoid uh, being charged by AWS Cloud, what you can do, you can click on this one and then go to instance stage and then click on stop instance. So when you do that, so this will make sure that you know you will not be charged uh, for your EC2 instance usage. Why? Because this is this is being stopped, right? Or it, it is stopped already, right? So that is also a good practice. All right. So yeah. So that's it, guys. Uh, that's how you would uh, provision an EC2 instance in AWS Cloud, and then that's how you connect to that Red Hat EC2 instance from your local machine. Thank you for watching this video.